and a warm welcome to Dateline London. What should the Pope do about the sex scandal enveloping the Catholic Church this Easter in what some have called its greatest crisis since the Reformation? As British Conservatives promise tax cuts, is it enough to win the general election? And Barack Obama goes to Afghanistan. Can he soon declare victory and pull US troops out? My guests today are Mark Roche of Le Monde, Laura Lynch, who's a Canadian writer and broadcaster, Michael Goldfarb of GlobalPost.com, and Johan Harry of The Independent. Very good to see you. Well, a Pope's apology to the Catholic people of Ireland has not been enough to quell widespread outrage among the faithful about the handling of paedophile priests. Going back years from North America to his native Germany, the Pope faces that most daunting of questions. What did he know and when did he know it? Has there been a Vatican cover-up? If so, by whom? And is the Pope in some way part of the problem or part of the solution? Laura, you covered some of the abuse stories in the United States, didn't you, for yes, a while? Yes, yes. When I was there, it was just breaking out in Massachusetts, a, a numbers of cases there and in other parts of the United States. And what surprises me so much about what's happening now is that they didn't see it coming at the Vatican after everything that happened in the United States, after those thousands of cases, after letting go of 5,000 priests in the end of all of this, after an enormously difficult struggle for Catholics to figure out how they were going to work through these problems and keep their faith, and also what the Americans might have taught them, American Catholics, was we figured out a way to take this problem and move forward. They created a code in the United States at a meeting of bishops. They created a zero tolerance policy. They gave Catholics a reason to believe that if they had made mistakes in the past, they were committed to moving forward and not making those same mistakes again. What I'm seeing now with the Vatican and its behavior is that it's just closing in. It's not responding to the problems that are boiling up all around them. It needs to learn that it's living in a world where accountability is utmost and the Vatican is not used but to couldn't that. But couldn't you say, I mean, if, if, if there was, a, as it were, an American solution to this problem within the church in, in North America, uh, shouldn't that be true of Ireland or Germany or other places where they're facing these kind of allegations? In other words, should it be localized or is it definitely the Vatican where the buck stops? Well, shouldn't the Vatican be setting the standard for those who, who follow the faith around the world instead of letting these solutions or non-solutions pop up here, there and everywhere? And yes, there are some in Ireland who have tried to tackle this issue head on and have dealt with it. And, and also in Germany, there's a certain opening up of dealing with this. But why wasn't the Vatican in the forefront years ago after what happened in the United States to say we need to look at this problem globally? Johan, as you know, the, uh, the Vatican or Vatican newspaper have said things like, you know, there's effectively a smear campaign against this pope. He's doing the best he can to, to sort this out. Well, the best way to answer that is just to read out what Ratzinger wrote in 2001. He wrote to every bishop, every Catholic bishop in the world, told them to keep it secretly in their safe. He said, I just want to read it out because it's very important that people know the exact words he used. He said, cases of child abuse should be dealt with in the most secretive way, restrained by perpetual silence, and everybody is to observe the strictest secret. There was no mention of going to the police. Father Tom Doyle, who was a Vatican lawyer, said explicitly was intended to make people not go to the police. Now, to understand how serious this is, we need to just imagine this happened in any other organisation. Imagine here at the BBC, in BBC TV Centre, there was a group of paedophiles running the creche, and the Director General of the BBC found out about it. He ordered all BBC staff to keep it secret, dealt with internally, and he moved those paedophiles to, say, the next BBC centre in another part of London, where they ran another creche, abused more children. When he was informed of that, he moved them to the BBC centre in Nairobi, where they abused more children. This is exactly what happened in the Catholic Church. And the language of mistakes and repentance, I think, are wrong. This is a matter for a criminal law. We're talking about an international criminal conspiracy to cover up the rape of children that enabled that rape to go on for a very long period. It's not enough to say sorry. If you're sorry, hand yourself over to the police and allow them to investigate it. Michael? Well, <clears throat> I'd, like, I'd just like to step the question back a bit. There's two points to make, and maybe we'll get to both of them. The first is the obvious one, which is the church's perpetuation of celibacy as the criteria for the priesthood is at the core of much of this problem not being able to deal with human sexuality historically has been a big problem for the Catholic Church. And not just the Catholic Church, one should say. A lot of churches have problems with, uh, or a lot of faiths have problems with dealing with sexual questions. That's right. But the second, and I think what's more apposite for this, is that we speak of the Catholic Church as if it's one entity. There's the Catholic faith, it seems to me, as an outsider, and then there's the Church. And the Church is a self-perpetuating political oligarchy headquartered at the Vatican. 
and the politics between the faithful and their church, it's not like our politics, which is about individual liberty against the tax code and, and, and how we organize that. It is about your eternal soul. It is what you will do for eternity. And it's a tremendous hold that this basically political group has over people. I think it's not a question of what we do about the Pope. I think it's much more a question of what the Catholic faithful choose as a way forward in the practice of their faith for the rest of history, because it is at a critical moment, but it's not the first critical moment that's been reached. I mean, o over the last few hundred years, every time there's some burst of progress in, in human emancipation, I've just written a book about Jewish emancipation, the Catholic Church, asks, the political part of the Catholic Church, acts as a drag on that. It pulls people back. It's a deeply conservative force in the most malign sense of what conservative means. Mark? Well, I think there are structural problem in the church that it's uh, inward looking, aging, completely cut from the day-to-day uh, -day life, uh, uh, also protecting, as uh, my colleague said, uh, their own. And uh, uh, there's also uh, <coughs> a problem with this pope in particular. I think that uh, he, there's nothing to wait from him. He was elected as a conservative force and he has shown to be very conservative, for instance, in France, he signed on with uh, uh, part of the clergy which was close to being revisionist and anti-Semitic in order to put them back into the fold. Um, he has made very conservative predicament on, on sexuality, on, uh, even on contraception. I think we'll have to wait the next one, hoping that he'll be wait a junk. Yeah, wait but for the next one. This one is hopeless. <coughs> I don't think we would say this about anyone else who had been involved in a conspiracy to cover up child rape. I don't think we'd say, well, what can we do? Let's wait. We would be talking about criminal prosecution. Now, at the moment, it is regarded by some people that the Pope has sovereign immunity because the Vatican is a state. It's really important to bear in mind. Firstly, the Vatican's only been a state since 1929 when Mussolini made it a state. I don't think we should particularly respect Mussolini's political decisions. But more importantly, as Geoffrey Robertson, the great international human rights lawyer, has said today, sovereign immunity does not cover crimes against humanity. This is a crime against but humanity. It, it doesn't about it, the rape of tens of thousands I, of I'm children. I'm conscious that people watching this uh, who are believing Catholics will say, here's four secular journalists talking about this effectively. You know, that, that they Some of the best people exposing this have been believing Catholics. Have been believing Catholics. I, I profoundly disagree with the ideas of Catholicism and all religion, but to be fair, there have been some people within the Catholic Church who've spoken very bravely, and they've been expelled from the Catholic Church. It's really important for people to bear this in mind. The Catholic hierarchy, it's not that they've just failed to deal with it. They have deliberately persecuted and handed out the people who wanted to deal with this in order to protect these people. Now, Ratzinger, it's really important people know this. Ratzinger, when he was defender of the Sacred Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, for 20 years at the height of this crisis, said every one of these cases should be referred to his desk. He is a famous micromanager. He was in charge. The paper trail goes to him. Yeah, but I think we should, of course, you're right, but we should go back to this idea of celibacy because um, I have the impression, that might be wrong, that in faith which uh, authorize marriage to the <laughs> clerics, you have less case of pedophilia. I mean, this is deeply ingrained in the uh, Catholic Church because you have celibacy. But I've, I've heard from, from, from Catholic friends, look, look, it's not that priests become pedophiles, it's that some pedophiles become priests because mm. there is clearly an opportunity, because they're in a position of power, and of course the church does very good work with children, which we, sh we shouldn't forget. So it's, it's not, you know, the celibacy issue has been raised here, but it's not simply about that.